Bienvenue à tous. Welcome to Reporters Plus on France 24, our program that gives you more on the stories that matter. In this edition, we take you to Venezuela, a country with the potential to be rich and prosperous until it hit the worst ever economic crisis in its history. The people are destitute, a paternal state much trumpeted by the late Hugo Chavez and his appointed successor, Nicolas Maduro, is now but a broken dream. In this extreme poverty, people turn to desperate means to get by, and almost everything is for sale. Our report reveals the depths to which people are falling. Some aspects of this will shock you. Cemeteries, graves being robbed of valuables, human remains sold into witchcraft rituals. Now, a warning for you, there are images in this report that may well disturb you. Caracas, Dancing with the Dead. France Franquette's team, Romeo Longlois, Amina Fernandez and Claire Pacalan. There have been many miracles here. The Catholic Church doesn't want to admit it, but the spirits we speak to are perhaps the ones who have performed the most miracles. In Venezuela, life is not what it used to be. So why not reach out to the dead, or the Santos Malandros, the holy thugs, to be precise. The cult of holy thugs is a brotherhood of spirits. When they were alive, they weren't exactly criminals. They stole, but to give to the poor. They weren't like today's thugs. They're only interested in defending their home turf. They stole from the rich to give to the poor. They broke into trucks carrying food, then they brought it to their neighborhoods and gave it to the people. This statue represents the spirit of Ismael Sanchez, a famous gangster from the 1960s. His followers say he has immense powers. They give him offerings and ask for his advice. I sit here, I smoke tobacco, and I speak to Ismael and the other spirits, just like I'm speaking to you now. And in the smoke and ashes of the cigar, I'll get answers to my questions. Gang members say Ismail is a saint who protects and indulges them. He's their partner in crime. If we do something bad, he helps and looks out for us. Once I was having problems with some other guys. I saw Ismail in a dream, and three days later, they were all killed. I don't know who killed them. It wasn't me. But these guys would have killed me. It's thanks to him. What happened to your friend? I got shot. He was shot by people trying to steal his motorbike. But he will walk again. He'll walk again. I have to believe. Faith moves mountains. <laughs> It's not only gang members who honor the dead Robin Hood of Caracas. Venezuela is in crisis. Daily life is about survival. The shrine is never empty. Many of us rely on them so that nothing bad happens to us, so we always have a little something to eat, so we're protected. Because at the moment in the streets, crime is out of control. Señor presidente, dígame qué se siente que mi país se ha vuelto el más peligroso del continente. Se supone que en tu casa te sobra el agua caliente. Muchos no tienen ni casa y viven abajo de un puente. Baja de la presidencia, por favor, dame la mano. Camina por las calles normal como un ciudadano. Ve lo que pasamos, por qué estamos como estamos. Mi protesta no es por mí, es por el futuro de mi chamo. Veo calles destruidas, muertos por balas perdidas. ¿Qué pasó con Venezuela que usted manda y no la cuida? Nunca hay escasez de alcohol, hay escasez de comida. Dime. Compañeros de la clase obrera presentes, 
President Nicolas Maduro was re-elected in May 2018 in a contested vote. He was the protégé of the late socialist president Hugo Chavez. But Maduro is in charge of a country in ruins. His opponents accuse him of having drifted towards dictatorship. Corruption and a fall in the price of oil have destroyed the welfare system. Living costs have gone through the roof, and inflation means money is worth less and less. Millions survive thanks to this, the Homeland Card, which allows them to receive rations from the government. So they killed him down there? Yes, in a fight. Apparently, the victim was a former soldier who was just walking by. He'd gone to greet his comrades. When he got there, there was fighting and chaos. He got shot. But we don't know who killed him. Caracas is one of the most violent cities in the world. And it's only getting worse as the crisis deepens. At this morgue every day, reporters count the dead. Undertakers look for business. Adela is waiting for the body of her 17-year-old. He was killed in front of her eyes. We were in bed. They broke open the door and came inside our house. They shot him. I tried to protect him, but they shot him again and killed him. I was injured. His name was Gabriel. Tell the guy to go straight to the cemetery. I don't even know if they put him in a body bag. I asked, but it's impossible to know. I couldn't understand anything. The undertakers are crazy with their coffins. They're not affected by the crisis. Does this cemetery have a bad reputation? A very bad reputation. There are lots of thieves. They come down from the hills and rob people at gunpoint. Don't take out your camera too much. It's scary here. There's no coffin. Let's see what we can do about that. In Venezuela, justice is absent. Impunity reigns. It's very unlikely Gabriel's killers will be convicted for their crime. The young man will be buried in a makeshift coffin. Paying for undertakers is too expensive, so family and friends dig the grave. We were given this coffin. In this country, there aren't even enough coffins to bury our dead. That's what we're going through in Venezuela, because of a president without scruples, who's corrupt, who stole the election to stay in power. Meanwhile, we suffer every day from hunger, misery, lack of medicine. There's not enough of anything. And then there are the security problems as well. My second died of a disease. Explain why he died. He didn't have enough medicine and he was given poor dialysis treatment. And my oldest was killed by someone who wanted to steal his car. For the last 20 years, Father Attilio has watched from the cemetery as his country has fallen into ruins. The cemetery has been left to rot. It's been handed over to grave robbers. And that's sacrilege in the eyes of the Lord. All this here has been desecrated. Look, here too. Everywhere. 
There's a head here. It's all rotten. Can you smell how it stinks? A head. A few tombs along, the followers of the holy thugs watch over their shrine. They know the cemetery and its secrets. La persona de los años. Back in the 1930s and 40s, people were buried with their jewelry and gold. So criminals, that's what they are, look at the dates of birth and death on the headstones, and they open the tomb to take out the gold and sell it. They're in on it with the guards. They share their booty with them. Most of the old tombs have already been desecrated. Finding gold is rare. But the grave robbers haven't given up. They have a new trade. The cemetery is home to witchcraft, which requires human bones. They take the remains out of the ground. The skull's worth something, each finger's worth something, a hand is worth something else. It's unacceptable. We bury the dead so that they rest in peace. In their own way, gang members from the neighborhoods that overlook the cemetery watch over their dead. The mothers of gang members are buried here. And when they visit their dead, the tombs of their mothers, fathers and brothers, if they find they've been desecrated, they're furious. They'll find the grave robber and kill him. Here they took out the remains so they could sell the coffin. Here we're at Joaquim Crespo's tomb. He was a Venezuelan president. He was buried here. Archangels. Their coffins were covered in velvet. Let's go down. There's someone here. That must have been his wife. The remains of Joaquin Crespo were here, but they've disappeared. What's that? Bones. The people who desecrated tombs brought them here. They did witchcraft here. The spirit of Joaquin Crespo must be roaming around in pain. He's not resting in peace. I'm not scared of the dead. Me neither. Everyone dies someday. It's the living who should be scared, not the dead. Was he baptized? Criminals aren't the only ones spilling blood. Police officers are often accused of killing young men if they decide they look suspicious. The family, the man being buried here today, believe he was killed by the police. The victim's mother says she saw everything. They slaughtered my child. They took him out of the house and killed him with eight or ten other youths. Everyone must know that Venezuela is hurting. Pray for this cemetery, because often we bury someone and a month later the skull or thigh bone has gone. Most of the people who end up in this cemetery are victims of homicide. 
And there are a lot of children. Lots of children die. There isn't enough medicine in the hospitals and clinics. Children need good nutrition in order to build up their defenses against diseases. That's why so many Venezuelan children are dying. The crisis affects hospitals across the city, including in the better off neighborhoods. The state coffers have emptied, so the government is unable to import enough equipment to medicine. This emergency center is actually one of the best in the country, but only one ambulance is able to leave the car park. Our ambulances are practically all out of service. We can't get hold of the spare parts we need to fix them. It's terrible. In Caracas, soldiers guard state hospitals. Reporters are not allowed in. Only the emergency center in Chacao, a neighborhood ran by Maduro's political opponents, lets us in. Honestly, we don't have enough of anything. I'm not lying. We lack syringes, gloves. We don't even have what we need to do stitches. We don't have scalpels. We have to ask patients to buy the medicine and equipment themselves so we can do them a bandage. The only thing we have left is a stethoscope. <sighs> Were you kidnapped? Where did they kidnap you? I was kidnapped. Where? On Libertador Avenue. And they let you go? They threw me down the stairs on Libertador Avenue. What time was it? About three hours ago. They threatened me with a pistol and forced me into a car. How long did they keep you for? I don't remember anything. Because they strangled me. And they hit me here. Did they steal anything from you? Everything. They stole his phone and all his shopping. Nobody goes to the police for this kind of thing. Because it doesn't change anything. Here, literally, there is no justice. There's no rule of law. We live in a country without law or justice. So people get kidnapped, robbed, and they'd rather keep their mouths shut about it. They don't go to the police because even the police officer they speak to could be an accomplice of the criminal who kidnapped them. We live in a country where we don't know who's good and who's bad. The local police in Chacao say they're the good guys. This evening, we join them as they patrol the residential areas in eastern Caracas. Here and across the capital, the streets empty out at nightfall. There are a lot of kidnappings in this area. They followed your victims, and when they get home, they force them into a car. Then, they demand a ransom in foreign money. Sometimes, police officers are in cahoots with the kidnappers. There are police officers who spend their time organizing kidnappings. There will always be this divide between the good cops and the bad cops. This evening, the Chacao police patrol intervenes in a banal affair, a noisy party. High walls, cameras, electric fences. The wealthy youth of Caracas live in an enclave. They say they only trust their local police force. If I was in a different neighborhood and the police arrived, I wouldn't go outside. We wouldn't go out. They could break the door in, but I still wouldn't leave the building. And if I was driving in a different neighborhood and there was a roadblock and I was alone? You wouldn't stop. Too risky. 
The police officers who watch out for the wealthy earn a miserable salary. A lot of us live in dangerous neighborhoods where we can't say we're in the police. In 10 years, at least five or six men I graduated with have been killed. And they were all killed when they were off duty. Someone wanted to steal their gun. We should earn a lot more because our work is really dangerous. With inflation, what can a police officer buy with his wage? Five hundred grams of meat and a box of eggs. He was trying to steal something, and so they shot him. With Venezuela's crisis intensifying, crime rates are exploding and prisons are full up. Maduro's government denies access to reporters. But the police in Chacao let us film the cells at their station. They want to show the tragic, hidden reality. Most of the prisoners have similar profiles. The situation in the country is a bit difficult. We have to help our families, but there's no work. So we have to steal in the streets to become criminals so we can feed our families. More than 100 prisoners are packed into just 50 meters squared. They never see daylight. After being arrested, they're supposed to spend only a few days here before being tried in court and then transferred to a state prison. The ministry organizes the transfers. It depends on the capacity of each prison. Everywhere is full. There are people here who have been waiting for one or two years to be transferred. There are people who have been here for eight or nine months. I've been here two years and six months. I don't have my ID documents, so I've still not been transferred. It's hard. It's not easy. There are cockroaches everywhere. There are mascots. They get into the food. The other day, a prisoner swallowed a cockroach. You can die from that. They make balls of paper and put them in their ears, so the cockroaches don't get into their ears and spread infection. We get herpes, fungal infections, lots of different diseases. It's the same for the bottles we use to urinate. We get infections from them. No lo han sacado. 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 No lo han
We know we've committed crimes, but we're still human, and this is not life. We're suffocating, we're starving, we're thirsty. The police in Chacao say they don't have enough money or resources to feed the prisoners. Families and charities help them survive. Because of the situation in the country, it's really hard for our families to bring us food. So we're dying of hunger. That's unacceptable. One person died of hunger. That's true. He was here. He died of malnutrition in this cell. He was called Manuel Fernandez. He died a month ago. Some of the members of the cult of holy thugs have been to prison. They describe extreme violence inside. If you speak badly to someone, you die. If there are any problems, you have to defend yourself with a knife. Being in prison is like playing a contact sport. You fight for everything, even sleep. Honoring the holy thugs is a way to get back on the right path. When the spirit comes down and enters someone, he speaks to them so they don't take the wrong path, so they don't follow his example. They tell him off. They know the risks, so they tell him to stop. It's a big day at the cemetery. Next to Ismail's shrine, his followers are inaugurating a new one. It's dedicated to the spirit of Elizabeth the Thief. She was Ismail's friend. He carried out his deeds with her. They're playing drums so that spirits show themselves and enter the human body. In Venezuela, Christian, indigenous and African belief systems have been fusing for centuries, constantly enriching the mix of saints and spirits to worship. The holy thugs' faithful followers have not swapped Catholicism for spiritualism. They say the strength of God and the powers of the spirits work together to protect them. In Caracas, you need all the protection you can get. Helped by alcohol and drums, a trance takes hold and the spirits start to talk. The spirits want to deliver a message, and that's why he's in this state. They have not yet delivered the message, but it won't be long. Today, the spirit has come from a long way. It's the spirit of Eric the Viking. The Vikings used to cut themselves with razor blades and broken glass. <laughs> Since 2015, some three million Venezuelans have left the country, driven out by hunger, violence and disease. But not everyone is able to leave. Many of those who stayed are looking up and beyond for help. Our reporter, Caracas, Dancing with the Dead, from Romeo Longlois, Emilia Fernandez and Claire Pacalan. See it again via our website, francefancat.com. Thanks for watching and stay with us.